Good morning. It's another new day. It's uh, Wednesday, and uh, it looks like it's going to be a nice day today. They say something about thunderstorms later on. We'll see. Uh, I see some clouds kind of brewing over there, but uh, the ponder of the day is uh, judgment, sentence, uh, the verdict. God looked down, and in Isaiah 59, 9-15, we see that Israel pleaded their case, and God looked and saw that there was no verdict. And that displeased God. In Isaiah 53, we see that God was pleased to put the verdict on Himself, on Jesus Christ, who was God with us. Jesus came, He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power to go about and heal all that were oppressed by the enemy. That is Satan, the serpent, who is more subtle than any beast in the field that God had made. Uh, so He was making restitution there. He restored all that the enemy had oppressed and then finally taking this sentence on himself uh, taking our sins from us uh, restoring our innocence to us because uh, those also were a product of the serpent so we see that he took the verdict he took the sentence that was handed down in Exodus 22 5 and 6 and 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 the message of reconciliation in Leviticus 6 1 through 7 uh, he restored us back to our innocent state and he healed all that were oppressed and then he became the, uh, the atonement he became the offering for sin uh, taking the verdict on himself so we see that the Lord God is just and we're gonna, today we're going to ponder how he took the judgment himself he took the verdict himself and then, because he took the verdict himself, we see that he was rewarded. We see that God took the verdict away and that he was risen from the dead. Uh, he came back to life to reveal the fruits of a righteous life, which we can see that in Ezekiel 18. Uh, if a man doesn't do these things, if he doesn't defraud anyone, then he'll surely live, is what the Word says. Uh, Mary and Austin, hi, I love you. I uh, had a good time over there uh, at Party at the Park yesterday. I was, I was imagining you and our son with us, and uh, I think if we went there as a family, we would definitely have to get there early and park ourselves right there around the stage for a little bit and uh, to be able to enjoy the show. Uh, I had made the mistake of I kept moving back and moving back because there were people with chairs around me. Uh, when really I should have just stayed where I was at and by the stage there I ended up way over by the trees the the, the grass line so to speak and uh, it just was it really got miserable I think there were well over 10,000 people there uh, enjoying party at the park and uh, if you're gonna bring your family to party at the park and you want to hear the music then you want to be up there around the stage. A lot of people go and they enjoy uh, the fraternization, they talk and they chat, and uh, you know, it didn't seem like they were really listening to the music, but there were people there that wanted to enjoy the music and enjoy, uh, Easton Corbin was there. So I didn't get to see him, I ended up leaving. Uh, it was getting late and I needed to get back, so. I love you, baby. I love you, little man. Thinking about you. Going through another day. Uh, living life uh, under affliction and pretense. Uh, just witnessing how really false Christians can be. Um, not in doing works. You can reach out and help the homeless. You can reach out and do things for people. But in living just lives and, and fulfilling... Uh, the ministry of reconciliation and teaching the truth, I don't see it happening in many churches at all. So, have a good day. Uh, Daddy loves you, little man. I love you, Mrs. Hi. <laughs> I better get out of people's way. I'm blocking the door.